and worship God and praise in him on this afternoon. Jesus, our blessed Savior, my God, my God, he is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, God. do come on say praise him. praise him yeah that's what we came to do say praise, praise him. him praise him praise him come on
Come on, call his name. What's his name, church? Jesus. And who is he? Blessed Savior. Yeah, so what did we come to do? He's worthy to be Come on, take it out. From the rising of the sun? Unto the going down of the same. Come on, anybody in the building know that he's, he's worthy? worthy? Worthy. Only Jesus. Jesus is worthy. Yeah, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, say praise him. Come on, say praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, church, let's call his name Jesus. Jesus. He's our blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, from the rising of the sun. From the Going down unto the going down of the same. Come on, let's worship our great God. He's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus, you're worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Yeah. Come on, say praise. praise. Come on, when you think of the goodness of Jesus Praise and all that he's done for you, Praise ah, you're so ought to shout hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, let's loop it right there. Come on, call his name Jesus. Jesus. Come on, he's my savior, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Come on, he's my healer, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, he's a doctor in a sick room. What's his name? Jesus. Yeah, he's a lawyer in a courtroom. Call his name. Jesus. Hey, my Jesus. Jesus. My lawyer. Jesus. Hey, my battle act. Jesus. Come on, church. Call his name. Jesus. I, the say. more I call him, the better I feel. Jesus. Come on. The more I call him, the better I feel. I love, I love, I love. I love. Jesus. Come on, say, I love, I love to call him. Jesus. I love to call him. Jesus. Blessed, Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy to yeah. be praised. Glory to your name, Jesus. You're worthy. Yes, you are, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Oh, how many know he's worthy? He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Uh, hey, our multimedia ministry led in press service on the night. Let's give it up for them. Amen. Thank you, our multimedia represented the Lord well, represented the ministry well, and we appreciate each and every last one of you. I look forward to these Wednesday nights for 6 o'clock press service where the different ministers of our church lead in press service, and it's always good to uh, see individuals that sometime are behind the scenes. A lot of you may not have recognized some of the folk that was up here tonight uh, because a lot of them are behind the scenes on Sunday mornings and on the Wednesday nights. But we thank God for their prayer time and that time was dedicated to praying for the healing of our city. And how many know we need a healing in this city? Lord have mercy. We need a healing for this city. We've had more debts in this uh, a uh, city uh, within this first five months than I think at any time in history 
of our city. We've had more individuals who touch by someone who has died. Any of you, a uh, family member have died already this year? Anybody know somebody has died? Anybody this year? Anybody? Uh, uh, death is almost happening on a regular, regular basis. And I don't know about you, when, when I was a kid or when I was growing up in the church where I grew up at, very seldom heard anything whether it was a sermon or a Bible study lesson on death. It seemed like it was taboo uh, uh, for Williams, Williams for, to talk about that. But a lot of people, uh, particularly these days and times, have questions about death uh, and particularly what happens uh, after death. And I thought about this uh, today, uh, of this lesson day, particularly when I looked at the TV and saw all of these uh, unnecessary killings that are happening across this city, this state, and this nation and even to the point where so many are being uh, uh, killed uh, out in the streets, man. And that's just, uh, uh, as I mentioned Sunday, there was a time, those of us who 50 years are older, uh, Brother Watson, when we had, we just had, we had a fist fight. Come on, read, y'all remember St. Aug against Clark, man? We just had fist fights, man, and, uh, and live to see another day. Live to see another day, and... Uh, but not today. Uh, the, the mode of conflict is just get out a gun and shoot. And so uh, I wanted to deal with this topic of death tonight because it affects Cheryl, all of us, in one way or another. And if you have not been affected, don't throw your hand out of the way. Hold on to it. Uh, sooner or later, it will come knocking at your door. Even better, pass it on to somebody that you may know uh, um, that are dealing with. Uh, Sister Parnes that are dealing, Jackie, that are dealing with this topic called debt. So uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you and praise you for this wonderful privilege and opportunity that you've given us to be in the Lord's house on this, the Lord's day. Thank you, Lord, for our multimedia ministry. Thank you for them leading us in prayer. What a joy it was to see uh, them stand before you, God, and read the scriptures and uh, sing the songs and most of all, say the prayers, God, on behalf of our city. Pray your blessings continually upon every last one of them. Then, God, we thank you for our praise team. Uh, thank you for just using them as every Wednesday night, God, to lift up your name in song. Thank you for the musicians, God, and pray your blessings upon them. Thank you for all of those who are in person in Bible study, and even those watching by way of Internet. Now, God, as always, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice, and I'll be careful to give your name all praise, all glory, and all honor for all that you've done, what you're doing right now, what you promise you will continue to do in Jesus' name. Amen. If you do not have a hand out, hold your hand up, and our ushers will get one to you. If you do not have a hand up, I see one hand, uh, it's black right here. Asia, Asia, I almost didn't recognize you with your new hairstyle, girl. I tell you, I tell you. Uh, but one day I see another. Anybody who do not have a handout, hold your hand up and we'll get one to you. If you need some extra ones for people you may know, that's not a problem uh, uh, also. All right, what happens after death? All of us in here one day will die. All of us in here, if not already, have known someone who has died. Have you ever asked the question, what happens after death? That's the focus of our lesson on tonight. What does the Bible say about what happens to a person after he or she dies? With all the funerals we've had this year, this is a question that is often asked or thought about. Therefore, in tonight's lesson, I want us to see what the Bible says about what happens, Brother Wilkerson, to a person. What happens, Sam Brooks, what happens to a person after he or she dies. I have 10 points on the handout that I want to go through and trust and pray you'll be blessed as a result of the lesson on the night. Number one, God's plan was for man to live forever. But Alexander, Alexander God never intended mankind to die. Tabitha, he, he never intended for man. God's plan, when God uh, created standing when God created stand when God created uh, you and I it was the intention for us to live forever look at Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 1 is when God created the heavens and the earth and just before he rested he created mankind Genesis chapter 1 look with me at verses 26 through 31 Genesis 1 26 through 31, then God said, let us 
meaning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, Brother Reese, was a part of creation. Let us make man in where? In our image. We were made in the image and the likeness of God according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing uh, that creeps upon the earth. It was never God's intention for us to be scared of roaches, to be scared of spiders, to be scared of mice, all right? Never. We were, and when God created us, it was God's intention. Dr. Marshall, good to see you, man. It was God's intention that we would have dominion over those things, that we would not be running from them like my wife do, but we'd be... <laughs> We, 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 they would be running from us. He said, let them have dominion over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man, don't miss this, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God, oh, I, I think I read that too fast. Male and female, he created them. We're living in a day and time where people are saying that they were born uh, a transgender, that they were born uh, uh, not knowing who they were. Well, that's not what the Bible says, and that's why you need to know the Bible. The Bible said God created them male and female. He created them. Then, he, then verse 28, then God blessed them. And look what the Bible said. And God said to them what? Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. You're over it. You're over it. You're over everything. So do it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on um, the earth. Verse 29, and God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth. I have a family member who, when they read that, say, see, God says it's okay to smoke weed. It's amazing, Anthony, how people just misinterpret and make the Bible. Say, look, say, look right there. God said he made every herb that yields a, a, a seed which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seeds. To you it shall be what? For food. This will be your supply of food also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and everything that creeps you repeats it on the earth in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God created mankind. He created us, and then he provided everything that we needed to live forever. But, George, everything we needed God put there Wembley in the God. Brian, God put there in the God so that we will live forever. It was never God's intention for you and I to die. And let me just stretch that a little farther. Not stretch it, but just reality. But Chambers, not only was never God's uh, intention for us to die, but it was not even God's intention for us to get sick. It was never God's intention for us to die. Stand, it was never God's intention. But Gray, for us to get sick. All of that are the results of something called SIN. When sin entered into the world, it messed up everything the way God intended. So the first thing about debt you need to understand is that it was never God's intention for mankind to die. Number two, man was warned about the consequence of disobedience. When God put Adam into the Garden of Eden, when God created Adam from the dust of the ground, brothers, we came from dirt, all right? But when God, brother Pender, made us, God said after he made us the cause that this is good. So when God created Adam from the dust of the ground, when God put Adam there in the Garden of Eden, he gave Adam a work, Adam, take care of the garden, dress it and keep it, and then he gave Adam his Word verses 15, 16, and 17, so that Adam would have no excuse. Look what God warned Adam in Genesis 2, verses 15, 16, and 17. Then the Lord took the who? The man. Eve was not created yet. Eve does not come on the scene until verse 21 of Genesis 2. 
So it was Adam's responsibility to be the priest, the protector, and a provider for his family. I need to say that one more time for those watching by way of internet. It was God's intention since Adam was created first to be the priest, the protect, protector, and such a part of the provider for his family. Then the Lord took the man and put him in the God of Eden to hear this, to tend and keep it. He gave him work. He gave him responsibility. Take care of the garden, dress it, and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, here it is, you may freely eat everything you see. You may freely eat, but there's that sanctified conjunction. But the tree of the what? The knowledge of good and evil. You shall what? You shall not eat. Don't miss, and here's the consequence. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall not just die. You shall surely die. God warned them, Brother Max, to Max. God, God, God told them, listen, everything you can have. Thousand trees in the garden. There's just one right over there that I don't want you to touch. But Abraham, they had freedom to eat anything they wanted to eat. They had freedom to do everything they wanted to do. There was one provision. There was one thou shall not. One thou, isn't that just like kids? They, they, they always do stuff you tell them not to do. And that's what happened to Adam and Adam and here in God. God told him, as one true to God, thou shalt not eat. That, ladies and gentlemen, and as a result of that, look at verse 17. He says, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for you shall not eat. For in the day you eat, you shall surely die. Adam knew the consequences of his disobedience. He knew it. He knew the consequence. Uh, 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 but the Perkins of his disobedience. And when mankind did what God told him not to do, then we suffer the consequences. There are consequences, ladies and gentlemen, to every decision we make. Every decision you make, it's either good or bad. There are consequences to every decision we make. And Adam and Eve, uh, even though Eve wasn't around, when God gave Adam the instruction, it was Adam's role as priest protecting brother to share that information down in Suzette with his wife. With his wife. And uh, uh, maybe I'll get to that in the next uh, uh, part. But uh, uh, man was warned about the consequence of this. So he, Adam was created there and told what to do. And then verse 21 is when Eve came on the scene. And the Lord God called the deep sleep. The fall of Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made a woman and brought her to the man. So Adam was created. God gave him uh, the niche of the instruction. Then Eve was created, and then it was Adam's responsibility to share with his wife what God told him. It was Adam's responsibility to share with his wife what God told him. So man, God's plan for, for man was to live forever. Number two, however, man was warned about the consequence of disobedience. Look at number three. Man's fall in the Garden of Eden affected God's plan for mankind. In other words, because of listening to Satan instead of listening to Deborah to the Savior, they were driven out of the Garden of Eden. God told them. And, and the, the day you eat of it, you're going to die. And, and God is a man that he should not lie. He loved Adam and Eve. He cared for them. He was first created being. But because they disobeyed, he could have said, well, okay, I'm going to give you all another chance. No. Nope. He told them of the consequences. So in Genesis chapter 3, it's titled The Temptation and the Fall of Man. So this is how it happened. The verse 1, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? A lot of stuff right there. Serpent, Satan, Lucifer was kicked out of heaven for disobedience. Pride got him kicked out of heaven. You see in the book of uh, Lucifer, uh, look at Isaiah, God said, I, I saw Lucifer fall from the sky. God kicked him out of heaven. He, didn't, he wasn't content in being a, an angel. He wanted to be God. God said, no, heaven's not big enough for both of us. He was kicked out of heaven. 
and came uh, uh, in the, uh, the Garden of Eden in the form of a serpent. And that's the thing about God. If the devil can't get to you, he'll get to your kids. He knew he could not get to God. So he said, that's all right. I'm going to get your children. And that's what the enemy will do. If he can't get you, he'll work through your kids to get back. Because when your kids hurt, when your kids do things that disobey God, it hurts you. So that's what he said. He, and look how the devil did. And the, now the serpent was more cunning than the beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, don't miss this. But talk listen to it. Notice who the enemy went to to deceive them. He didn't go to Adam first. He went to Eve. In other words, God had established a heavenly order. God, the man, the woman. And what the devil does, he usurps the authority of God. He usurps the authority of God. But even though he usurped the authority of God, if Adam would have been on his job, Ashley, the devil never could have succeeded in his game plan. He said to the woman, has God indeed said you should not eat of every tree of God? Why didn't he go to Adam? That, that's his plan. His plan is to usurp God's authority. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Don't miss this. God has said what? You shall not eat, nor shall you touch it. Adam did his job. Eve wasn't there when God told Adam that. So Adam did what, he, what God... Adam shared to Eve, Eve, everything you see is ours. Only one thing God told us, that see that tree there? God told us that Eve knew, this, Eve knew what not to do. But that's how the enemy works. He'll go to the weakest link. And at that point in time, he went to Eve instead of going to Adam. He usurped God's authority. And then, not only that, he allowed doubt to come in. Eve told him, you shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Look at verse 4. Then the devil said, girl, you ain't going to die. Yeah, you, you ain't going to die. Then the, You will not die. Uh, for, uh, for God knows that the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So that's all the, all the enemies is telling me to do is just put doubt. Just put doubt in your mind. Because the devil knows if we can get our mind to think it, we can get our body to do it. And he put doubt in Eve's mind and said, well, you know, did God really mean what he said? Verse 5, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. She said, Really? Verse 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, don't miss this, she took of its fruit and what? And ate. That's it. She did what God told them not to do. But not only that, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. You ever saw this Steph Curry commercial with him and... Uh, uh, what's the lady, Candace Parker, and he's uh, uh, looking at his phone and she slaps that out of her, his hand. That's what Adam should have did. Adam, when she, girl, put that down. That, that, no, no, we're not supposed to touch that. He should have slapped it out of her hand. But instead, he saw, her, he was right there, the Bible say, because Adam was right there with her. It, it's right there in the Bible. She, the, the, uh, uh, and the tree desired to make one wise. She took of his fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband. Where was he? Right there. With her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. And they put a fig leaf together and made themselves coverings. Man's fall in the Garden of Eden affected God's plan to for mankind. God approached them and said, did y'all do what I told y'all not to do? As a result of that, 
Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. Let me just go on to, to read the rest of it so you can really see what happened. Verse 8, and they heard the sound of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Why were they hiding? They wasn't hiding before. They were having fellowship with God every day. So, so, so more, 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 every day, they were hiding from God because they knew they did wrong. Just like our kids. You, you can tell when your kids mess up. You just look at them and I say, oh, oh Lord. I mean, the big tears start coming in their eyes. The mouth start dripping. They knew that they had did what God told them not to do. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said, Adam, where are you? God never had to do that. Adam always was fellowshipping with God. So he said, I heard your voice from the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Now, in Genesis 2 and 25, God created them. Look at Genesis 2, verse 24, verse 23, even Eve is introduced to Adam. Verse 24, God marries them. There's the marriage. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Look at verse 25 of Genesis 2. And they were both what? They were naked in Genesis 2, 25. They were, they were naked in Genesis 2.25. Why, why now are they ashamed? Because they ate of the tree of good and evil. Their eyes were open. And what God intended to be beautiful, to be enjoyable, now it was bad. And the God, God said, who told you, verse, 20, verse 11, who told you you was naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded that you should not eat? Verse 12, then the man said, that woman you gave me. Well, you didn't say that in Genesis 2, bro. So that, that, that now he passes the buck. He passed the buck. Yeah, 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 the, the woman you gave me, he did it. Yeah, he, he, he's passing the buck. And ever since then, mankind has been passing the buck. The woman that you gave me. She gave it to me. Uh, uh, the woman of whom you gave to be with me, she gave to me of the tree, and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. Verse uh, uh, 14, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field on your belly. You shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And that's why snakes are on, uh, uh, travel on their belly. They were cursed there in Genesis chapter 3. Verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. From that time, there's been a disagree. There's been a, a, a fraction. There's been a fight between mankind and between the devil. He don't like us and we don't like him. He said, I will put enmity between you and the women and between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. So the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow uh, and your conception. I've never had a baby, but the woman I, I know who has, ladies, y'all can tell, there's pain. That's the result of the curse. Uh, your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In terror you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both the thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. There was never that way before. And you shall eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and dust you will return. Dust you are, and dust you will return. So as a result of the fall of mankind, they were kicked out of him. They had to do it on their own. Before, God provided everything. God said, okay, you grown now? You're on your own. They, didn't, they had everything they wanted, desired, was right there. But now that they decided to be grown, God said, oh, you're grown now? Get out of my camp. Get out of my garden. And they had, Adam had to work by the sweat of his brow 
for the rest of his life. So God's plan was for man to live forever. Number two, man was warned about the consequence of Eden. Number three, man's fall in the Garden of Eden affected God's plan uh, 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 for mankind because of listening to Satan. Instead of the Savior, they were driven out of the Garden of Eden. Number four, man's sin and rebellion separated him from God. When Adam and Eve sinned, it caused a separation between man and God. This was man and God in Genesis 1 and 2. But when man sinned, this would happen. There was a separation. Separation. Like I always say, if you and God are not as close as y'all used to be, guess who moved? Guess who moved? Man's sin and rebellion separated him from God. Look at Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Look at Romans 3 and 23. For all have what? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Look at Romans 6 and 23. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages, the payoff of sin is what? Is death. When payday comes for mankind, is death. Because of our sin, our payoff is death. San Jose Joe, it was Willie, it was never God's intention for us to die. But the moment Adam and Eve sinned, it separated them from God. And as a result of that, uh, sin caused us to be separated from God. And as a result of that, Jesus died because of mankind sinning against God. God. It was never God's intention for his only son to die. Never God's intention. But because of God's love for mankind, he gave his only son to die for mankind. So man's sin and rebellion separated him from God. Number five, because of sin, man has an appointed time to die. It never was God's intention for us to die, but because of sin, guess what? All of us going to die. All of us have an appointed time to die. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, near the back of your Bible. Hebrews chapter 9, right before the book of James, you'll find the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9, and look at verse 27. And as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this, the judgment. Because of sin, man has appointed time to die. In other words, every last one of us in here has an appointed time. We don't know the day, the years, we don't know the hour, we don't know when, we don't know where. The fact is, none of us are here to stay. I love to say I love to live to be 150 years old. We can say 120. But, 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 but that's not promise. Because of sin. Because of sin. And as a result of that, every last one of us in here have an appointed time. I don't care how much you go to church. I don't care how much you read your Bible. I don't care how much you pray. You're going to die. I don't care if you eat fried food or don't eat fried food. You're going to die. I don't care if you exercise five hours a day or sit in front of your TV five hours a day. The perfect matter, you're going to die. You can't get out of life alive. You're going to die. All of us, Tony, must pass this way. All of us will die. That's why the most, uh, um, I guess, uh, secure job in America is the undertaker. Because the undertaker will always be in business. None of us on our jobs are, 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 are guaranteed we're going to be there forever. But go put an application at the funeral hall. You work to, to all the days of your life because all of us have an appointed time to die. Number six, after death, here we go. What happens after die? What happens when a person die? Well, there are two things that happen. There are only two places to go when we die. One is heaven, and the other is hell. The, the Bible is specific. The Bible is plain. 
There are only two places to go, but the family once we die. One is heaven, and Carlos and Felicia, the other one is hell. There's no middle ground. There's no purgatory. There's no place you can wait and have somebody to pray with you or pray for you. That's not going to happen. That is not in the Bible. Nowhere. That, that one, that there's only two places mankind can go after he dies. After she dies, one is heaven and the other is hell. Look at number six. After death, the lost will go to a place called hell. Look at Luke chapter 16. Those individuals who die without Christ will live eternally in torment forever. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how some people, when you try, and Darrell, I know y'all see it out on the street all the time as you're witnessing. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, going, in, I'm, going, to, with, I'm going to hell and have a good time with all my friends. Yeah, you may be going to hell, but you ain't going to have no good time. I've heard people say that. I'm just going to go, I'm going to go to hell and have a good time with my friends. No, you're not going to have a good time. The Bible said there'd be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Look at Luke chapter 16, beginning at verse 19. The story of the rich man and Lazarus. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gate, designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his wound. Verse 22. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosoms. However, the rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23. And being in what? In torment. Being in torment in Hades, in hell, the rich man lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus sleeping like a baby in his bosom. The same one he had saw begging at his yard, begging for food. He's now in Abraham's arm, in Abraham's bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, don't miss this, that he may dip not, not to get a scoop in his hand. We Greg and Mary that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool. Just, just, I just need a, a dip. Just, just a tip. And, and, and cool my tongue for I am what? I'm tormented in this flame. People in hell are going to be tormented forever and forever and forever. It's not a good place. It's a place that God created for all those, for Lucifer and all those angels that rebelled in heaven. heaven. Hell was never intended for mankind. But because of sin and rebellion, that's where the unsaved will find themselves. So after that, the lost will go to a place called hell. That's why those of us who have loved ones and who find themselves at the end of their life, we do all that we can. Hey, man, I just want to make sure that you got your house in order. I want to make sure that you got your house in order. A dear friend of ours, Elizabeth and I, uh, had death in the family, and uh, uh, Beth told me that. She said that she just, she went, to, she went to him, and she just said, baby, I just want to make sure that you got your house in order because hell is not a place you want to go. So when the lost die, when lost and unsaved die, they go to a place called not purgatory, not a waiting room, but they can pray and then get another chance. No, they had all the chances they had while they were living. None of us today will have an excuse when we stand before God. But all these Christian radio stations, with all these Christian television stations, with all these churches, with all these street preachers, no one will have a, 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 an excuse to tell God, I didn't know, particularly in America. So it's a choice that we make. Number seven, mankind, however, can escape hell at death by accepting Christ when they are living. That's good news, y'all. Mankind can escape hell at death by accepting Christ 
when they are living. Because of God's love for mankind, he has made a provision for us to avoid eternity in hell. One of the most popular scriptures in all the Bible, John chapter 3 and verse 16, is a testimony to this statement. John chapter 3, many of us read verse 16, but 16 and 17 go together. John chapter 3, look at verses 16 and verse 17. For God so loved the world, we know this one, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But look at verse 17, it's connected. For God did not send his son into the world to what? To condemn the world, but that the world through him, what? Might be saved. That the world through him, through who? Through Jesus Christ. So it's that the world through him might be saved. Mankind can escape hell by accepting the gift of God's son, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10 is another passage of scripture that verifies what God does for those of us who accept Christ in our lives as Lord and Savior. Romans chapter 10, look at verses 9, 10, and then verse 13. Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse, uh, uh, Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 9. Romans chapter 10, whoever believes on the, I mean, that's the verse 9, uh, verse 9, I'm sorry, that if you what? Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that what? God has raised him from the dead. What happens? You're going to be saved. It's right there in the Bible. It's, Josh is right there in the scriptures. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Don't miss verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I've done street ministries when I first got saved. Uh, I used to do street ministry. That's why I preached so fast in the pulpit. Because uh, uh, on the street corner, people moving fast and quick. And a lot of times when you're, pre when you're witnessing the folk on the street, I'm sure again, y'all see it all the time, just to get you out of their face, they'll pray the prayer. They, they'll say, okay, I'll accept them. The problem is they're saying it with their mouth, but they don't believe it with their heart. God said, you can't just say it with your mouth. Anybody can say, I believe, I believe, I believe. But do you believe it in your heart? Because if you believe it in your heart, it's going to change your walk. It's going to change your talk. It's going to change your lifestyle. So the Bible says, for you confess to them out the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead. I shall be saved. For with the heart, man, believe it on the right, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Then go down to verse 13. Look what verse 13 says. For whosoever, put your name there, put my name there. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Back in 1977, I read this and I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life. Even though I was brought up in church, baptized at six years old, singing in the choir, serving on the usher board. I mean, uh, every Sunday was in church. My mama made us go to church. But I was lost. I was lost. It wasn't until I made a commitment to God in Charity Hospital, asked Jesus Christ to come into my life and start, and not only with my mouth, but in my heart, and that made all the difference in the world. Mankind can escape hell at death by accepting Christ when they're living. I thank God that when I was hit on that motorcycle accident on Paris Avenue that I didn't die. Because if I would have died when that woman hit me and my neighbor and threw us from the bike to the sidewalk and I I didn't realize. I tried to get up, and I fell down immediately. So I just said, lay down, lay down. I had a compound fracture, bone coming out my skin, holding my head. Could have died. Yeah, but I thank God I didn't die. Thank God God gave me another chance. And when Brother Louis Bologna came to that hospital, put his finger in my face and said, boy, obedience is better than sacrifice. You need to give your life to the Lord. God gave me another chance to get it right. So as long as you have blood circling in your arteries and your veins, you got a chance. Those watching on there, as long as you got blood, as long as God, you're breathing oxygen and blood, you have a chance to get right with God. Because once you're dead, it's over. God gives mankind a chance while we live. And mankind can escape hell 
at death by accepting Christ when they're living. Number eight, when believers die, we go to a place called heaven. We showed you that. And number six, when a believer, when an unbeliever dies, we go to a place called they go to a place called hell. However, when a believer dies, we go to a place called heaven. Go back to Luke chapter 16. Same story with the rich man and Lazarus. But notice one was a unsaved and he died and went to hell. The other was saved and he died and went to Abraham's bosom. Look at verse 22, uh, uh, Luke 16. So it, was, so, so it was that when the beggar died, he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The body that we see up here for funerals, that's just the shell we came out of. It's going back to the ground. You've been to funerals. I've been to funerals. People trying to get in the, get in the car. Oh, come on, on in. You don't want to get in there. That's just a shell. That's, that's just a shell. And if mama did get up, you'd be running out this church. <laughs> that, that's, that soul and spirit has gone to be with the Lord. Look what it says. It's right there. When the beggar died and was carried by the angels, Abraham was a, when a believer died, immediately that spirit is going home to be with God. That's good news. That's good news. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. It's a prepared place for prepared people. You've got to be born again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1, for we know that Brooks, Sam, if our earthly house, if this tent, this body that we're in is destroyed, Bill, we have a building from God, a house not made with the hands, eternal in the heavens. This body is going back to the crown. We came from dirt. I showed that to you in Genesis 2. When God created Adam, he created Adam from the dust of the ground. And that's why when we do funerals, when we go to cemetery, what do we say? Earth to earth, ash to ashes, dust to dust. We're going back to where we came from. This body will decompose and it's going back to the dust where we came from. But the soul of a believer, the spirit of a believer goes back to God. The spirit of an unbeliever goes to hell. It's as plain as the, as the old people say, as the, uh, the, uh, the nose on my face. Uh, he said, did the rich man go to hell because he was rich? No. He didn't go to heaven because, uh, hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he was an unbeliever. A lot of rich people are going to be in heaven. But guess what? A lot of rich people are going to be in hell. A lot of poor people are going to be in heaven. And a lot of poor people are going to be in hell. God don't send anybody to heaven or hell based on your W-2 statement. Based on what's in your heart. Based on, look, 2 Corinthians 5 and 1. For we know that if our early house of this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. Go down to verse 8. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be what? Absent from the body. And present with the Lord. Number nine, once in heaven, no matter what we died of, we get a new body. That's good news, y'all. When Second Corinthians, go to your left. Go to First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 54. First Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, I don't care how a person dies. It could be a, a believer anyway. It could be a natural death. They can die of cancer. Like my mom did. Like, they give a heart attack. They can die of missing limbs through an accident, a car accident, uh, somebody in war got shot and uh, they lost their leg or their arm, amputations, someone because of diabetes got their leg cut off or their foot cut off or their toes cut off. It doesn't matter how a person died on this earth. You need to know that all believers will have a new body. I have a new body. When I get to heaven, I'm not gonna need. I'm not gonna need these glasses. I'm have a new body. Those of you walking on a cane, you're not gonna need that cane. You're gonna have a new body. If you have a wheelchair, you you have a new body. That's assured of God. This body has been affected by sin. 
The wages of sin is death. Day by day by day. Every day we're leaning, we're leaning, we're losing. But God promises us a brand new body. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 50. Oh, that's good news. That is good news. That is good news. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood, elder cannot inherit. Brian cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This flesh can't go to heaven. It's corrupt. Nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Talk about the rapture. We shall, we shall not all die. But all of us shall be what? Changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ will rise how? Incorruptible. Mom, dad, papa, mama, sons, daughters who died before you, if they had a relationship with God, at the rapture of the church, they shall rise first. They're going to beat us. We're alive. The trumpet shall sound, and we are dead. They will be raised, and we shall be changed. Here it is. We shall be changed, uh, be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. Verse 53 For this corruption, corruptible must put on what? Incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption, corruptible has been put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Dead, where's your stain? Debt is swallowed up in victory. Oh, debt, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? God's going to give us a new body. Real quickly, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. I like this. Verse 1 John chapter 3, near the back of your Bible, the first epistle of John, near, near the back of your Bible, right after the book of 2 Peter, you'll find the book of, uh, of 1 John. Look at 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. 1 John... 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. Are you there? 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. As soon as I find it, I'm going to read it. Because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God. Mm, and it has not yet appeared what we what? Shall be. We don't know what we shall be. But with this we do know that when he is revealed... We shall be what? Just like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as. Now remember back in Genesis we were made into what? In the image and the likeness of God. So when we go back to heaven, we're going to be just like him. God going to make us the way we were intended to be. Oh, that's good news, y'all. That, that, that's good news. That's good news. And then finally, after leaving this earth, God will create a new heaven and a new earth for all believers, a place of no more. I know some of you love your house. Some of you love the neighborhood you live in. Some of you love the community you live in. But guess what? Nothing compared to what God's going to give us. Because this world is corrupt, this earth is corrupt, this earth is full of sin, it's going to be burned up, y'all. This is uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, all 51 states will be burned up. God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth uh, for all believers. And I should call a place of no Revelation chapter 21 as we come to a close. Revelation chapter 21. Man, there's some places sometime Elizabeth and I, we just like to ride and see some of these beautiful mansions, man, and we admire them. Say, oh, that is nice. That is nice. Sometime on the internet, we'll look at uh, uh, some of the homes of movie stars. And, oh, boy, they, 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 they Lord. But nothing's going to be compared to what God has prepared. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a what? A new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were what? This is the first heaven. Of earth. This is going to be passed away. It's going to burn up. It's going to be destroyed. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven for God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and there shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And here it is, and God shall wipe away. All the tears, every tear from their eyes. There should be no more debt, no sorrow, no crying. 
Neither shall there be any more pain. Why? Because the former things have passed away. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be in a place that the Bible calls a place of no more. No more sickness. No more crime. No more dying. No more shootings. No more carjackings. No more racism. We're going to be in a place of no more. No more hospitals. No more hospitals. No more dying. No more funerals. It's a prepared place for prepared people. And finally at the bottom, brothers and sisters, I pray that this lesson will help answer the questions that you had about what happens after death. We got to close out, but just in case I didn't answer everything or all the questions you may have asked, I'm going to take two or three questions. If anybody have any questions about heaven, about hell, about death that I did not cover and you're still not clear about, I want to take an opportunity to tr answer your question right now. Anybody have any questions? Uh, hopefully I did a good job. Yes. Yes. The question she says that if God knows everything from the, from the beginning, right? She says, yes. So why did he set it up with Adam and Eve and the serpent? The thing about that, when God created man, God did not make us robots or machines. He made us because he loved us with a free will to make choices. And even though Adam and Eve had everything they desired, they had the freedom to make a choice. Now, God could have made them machines, could have made us robots. Well, we have no choice. We walk around like robots. But he gave them a choice. He gave them freedom. And Adam and Eve, through the temptation of the serpent, chose to listen to the devil instead of listen to the divine. So they did it because of a choice. Darrell? Quick reference. Quick reference. All right. Matthew 25, 41. Yes. Amen. Matthew, Matthew 25, 41. So to answer your question, they had a free choice. They had a free will. They had, and they chose because of temptation, um, to listen to the devil instead of the uh, God. Two more questions. Anybody have any? You don't have to, but if you have a question. Yes. A statement. A statement. All right. God send to hell. The Bible, he said just a statement. God does not send anybody to hell. And that's true. God, God does not send. God's desire and love for mankind that all of us would be in him, with him in heaven. He doesn't send anybody to hell. We go to hell when we choose to disobey God that's that free will again, and, and choose to uh, listen to the devil instead of uh, uh, God. Anybody else? One last question. Yes. Yes, sir. Alvarez? Yes. Yeah, because... Uh, He's talking about the rapture of the church. And one day soon, I probably need to do a, a study on the last days. Uh, all of us in here may not die physically. There's something that the next act in God's calendar is called the rapture of the church. Based on 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where the Bible says, uh, uh, the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And that's what he's talking about. All of us will not die physically if we happen to live when God comes back. So we'll be caught up in a call the rapture. Yes, sir. Yes. Yep. Good point. Adam, when Adam and Eve were kicked out of God, and he didn't, they didn't die physically. They died spiritually. According to Genesis, Adam would die that when he was a hundred and something years old. It's a lot of grace. A lot of grace. Well, I'll be up here at the end if anybody have any personal questions that you just don't want to ask. But I hope this, this, did this lesson help somebody? All right, I see a hand there. You got a hand or you just testifying? I didn't, can you speak a little louder? Great question. The question is, will we know our loved one? And the answer, according to the Bible, you will know them. Yes, that's why we say don't weep without hope. You'll see your loved one again. Now, how we will know them, that's a mystery. 
but according to the Bible, uh, uh, the Bible said, talks about that, that, that we, will, we will see them again, uh, but how we will know them, that's the mystery. But according to the Bible, in, the, uh, in the Timothy, uh, um, uh, you fought a good fight, finished the course, kept our faith, and, and according to the scripture, we'll know our loved ones. That's what gives us hope. God said, don't weep without hope because you'll see them again on the other side. But how? That's the mystery part. But you will know them, particularly if they were believers. Great questions. Okay, I'll be up here at the end. If anybody have any further questions, I hope this lesson helps somebody. Father, thank you and praise you for the privilege and opportunity of sharing this lesson tonight on what happens after death. God, I pray in Jesus' name that it gave somebody hope, that it gave somebody an urgency in their heart to share Christ with family members and loved ones and coworkers and neighbors that don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ because there's only two places that they can go. One is heaven. And the other is hell. God, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice have their lives together, God, that they know without a doubt in their mind that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of their lives. And we be careful to give you praise. Now, I want to extend a, just one minute. We got to close out. I'm already seven minutes uh, uh, behind time. But if there's anyone here tonight that don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we want you to come, walk down these aisles, give the preacher your hand, give the Lord your heart. Listen, it's the best decision you can ever make in your life. We don't know. We plan to leave here after we benediction and go home, but we don't know if we're ever going to get there. So if you're here tonight and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, don't play with it. Don't mess around. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. I thank God that God gave me grace when I was hit in that motorcycle accident and that God didn't kill me a lot at that time. He gave me grace to be in charity hospital, but baloney, baloney, because the diet, not only a compound fracture, but I had a hole in my head. And the doctor told my family he has a 50-50 chance of waking up the next day. And I thank God that God woke me up. And I said, God, if you wake me up tomorrow, I'll I, I serve you all the days of my life. And by God's grace, girl, I woke up the next morning, and I started serving God, Ashley, all the days of my life. So I praise the Lord for that. So if anybody's here tonight, if you're watching by way of internet, there's a number on your screen, 504-488-8488, extension 312. That's my personal extension. Call that number. Let me know your decision, and I'll be sure to call you back and share uh, Christ with you. Father, we thank you and praise you. Pray your blessings upon everybody under the sound of my voice. God, I pray that nobody will leave here without a relationship with Jesus Christ. God, I'd be the last person to leave out of this sanctuary. If somebody is embarrassed or ashamed or just shy, God, I pray that they'll come and talk to me. Get it right with you so that they can spend eternity in a place called heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. That's all. We have one funeral uh, this coming Friday. Uh, one of our members, Troy Lynn Palmer, her sister died uh, uh, Chabaza Bellu and I was talking to her uh, sister 64 years old never been sick a day in her life never never been sick a day in her life and uh, got sick uh, went to the hospital uh, had some, some uh, issues with uh, blood circulating they cut off one leg and then had to cut off another leg and then she died 64 years old her, her service will be at Charbonnet by funeral home uh, uh, this coming Friday, a 9 o'clock viewing, 10 o'clock. So, so keep uh, Charlie and Palmer and uh, uh, Sister Bellu's uh, family in prayer. For his announcement, choir members, please, please, please fill out the Minister Music Survey form. If you were part of the choir on first Sunday and second Sunday, went to the choir, we, we are choosing between a minister, uh, uh, between uh, two individuals, Ricky Draper, who was with us on first Sunday, and uh, Trenton Kersey, who was with us on second Sunday. We want your feedback. You are part of the choirs. You are part of the rehearsal. You are part of the, uh, the services. Give us your feedback. Justin just put a survey together. I think it's five or six uh, uh, questions. You can go online and fill that out because we'll be uh, looking over them. The committee will be on the, this week. So, um, Choir members, please fill out that survey form. We need your feedback. Also, Sunday, we acknowledge in college graduates. So if you know anybody in your family, loved one, this coming Sunday, they'll be standing right up here 
and we're going to uh, uh, we're going to hear about the college they graduated from. Give them a great applause and send them off and thank God uh, 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 for them. Whether they're going away or like Brother Stare daughter coming back home. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! And then finally, Brother Brooks will be in the fellowship hall with the uh, devotional word for today. Uh, now, if uh, you want to get that, it's a, it's a great devotion. I read it every morning. Just great insight. So you're welcome to get that from Brother Brooks over there. All right. Let us all, I mean, I'm oh, any first time guests, y'all just wave your hand. You're here for the very first time. Anybody for the very first time? All right. All right. Well, let us all stand. Good to see everybody. Thank you all for coming out. Trust and pray that the lesson was a blessing to you, and now you can be assured of uh, where you will spend eternity. Pastor Marshall, good to see you, man. Thank you for being here on tonight. Now, this reads a benediction. Now, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of God's precious Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us until we meet again. Watch over us, God, as we depart from this place. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 and amen. God bless y'all. Have a great day.